Welcome to Going Carnivore in Thailand. Now, I want to thank my user 604 Nation because they had asked the question on a previous video, how did you go from 190 to 380 pounds? What was the story? Well, that got me thinking, and I decided to work on reconstructing my memory over time on all the trials and tribulations, along with some associated stories of what transpired from 1977 when I was 22 years old to present day. So let's get to it with this episode. Welcome. Let's jump into a new story. I'm 26 years old. It's 1981. I'm in Cincinnati and I just started a new business. It all started out pretty innocently. Uh, in 1979, I bought an Apple II computer actually to help in my business with the scale company and the Apple II computer oh it was simple it had limited memory limited everything black and white nine inch screen still it was really expensive for me at the time and that was in 79 well between 79 and 81 I started investing in multifamily apartments and renting them out. And I had some interesting experiences in that in which I had tenants who were professional deadbeats. They would move into a new apartment pay the first month in the security deposit with no intention of paying anything else. And these people were on average getting evicted three or four times a year. So since I had about, well, I guess by this time I had almost 200 residential units that I was in partners with, with a couple people. And we were getting our head handed to us by these professional tenants. And it led me to start a business called Evict Alert. Now, I know you're saying, how does this end up with the diet? Well, when I started Evict Alert, it was starting new chapters in my life. Chapters in which I'm just using my brain more than my brawn. And it all began with this guy who was a resident of a property located on Hackberry Street in Walnut Hills, East Walnut Hills. Just bought this property. And I had this resident who didn't pay. So I ended up having to evict him. So I went to court and I got an eviction, uh, eviction from the judge. Said he's got 10 days to get out. Fine. So now he's lived in there 60 days since I bought the property. He hasn't paid a dime. So I have an appointment to meet the sheriff. We're going to put his stuff on the street. I'm going to get possession of the property so I can clean it and re-rent it. Well, I get there at 10 o'clock in the morning. I got a couple guys with me. And uh, we're waiting on the sheriff. I look up and this guy, he's sitting on his porch. He's drinking a beer. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. The guy's drinking a beer. And he's just got a smile on his face like, yeah, no big deal. So by 1030, no sheriff. 
so I get a telephone and call to down to the courthouse and the clerk's office. And they said, yesterday afternoon, late, the judge issued a new order giving him another 10 days. Now, I wasn't a part of any hearing. Nothing. So, I got that notice, and I had to go down to the court because I was outraged. I talked to the judge. I said, how in the world can you give him 10 more days? He says, well, he came in here, and he said he was buying a house, and he put every dime he had into a down payment. In 10 days, he could be out, but if not, him and his babies are going to be on the street. So I decided to just give him 10 days. And I was pretty smart with the law. I said, that's an ex parte hearing. How can you do that to me? I've got men and guys down there ready to evict him. The sheriff gets a, a last-minute call that you gave him 10 extra days. I said, that's not right. Well, Judge, he didn't give much of a shit, so what can you say, right? So 10 days comes, and I've got another sheriff's appointment, so I'm back waiting for the sheriff. And here's this guy sitting on the porch drinking a beer. And I said, what the fuck is he? He must think he's not going out again. This time, though, with the beer, he's got a camera. Just a cheap camera. And I said, you know you're getting evicted. You're going to have to pack up and leave. He said, oh, no, you don't understand. He said, I move in. You move me out. I don't pick up a thing and carry outside. You have to put it out by the curb. And if you scratch any of my belongings in any way, I'm taking pictures. I'm going to sue your ass. Well, that didn't go very big with me either, right? So we had no choice. We had to carry his stuff out. And believe me, he lived like a pig. He was worried about his stuff. His stuff wouldn't make good kindling for a fire. But we got out of there. He got out of there. We were gone. Now, I mentioned I had like 200 other apartments. So I had a resident manager at this other building that had 16 apartments in it that wasn't too far away. And... Two days later, I get a call. It says, I've got an application here for the, for the apartment number 11. I've got a, took a deposit. And I said, well, let me come down and check out the application. See who we got. I came down and looked, and guess who it was? The guy I just threw out over on Hackberry. Same guy. I said, Huh. Let me see that application. Where's the deposit? Guy says, I got it right here. I said, give it to me. I said, tell the guy application denied and that Mark Hanna, you know, the guy who owns Hackberry, you owed him money. He took your deposit suing. Well, the resident manager didn't like that, but I didn't care about that either. So I kept the deposit, and I took the rental application, and I went back down to the judge. And I said, Judge, look at this. He didn't have any house. He lied to you. He wanted to come try to rent a new apartment from me. And I said, you know, the worst thing about it is nobody ever has any information on these people. And now the judge was a little bit more understanding because he looked like an idiot. And I said, somebody needs to keep track of that. It's not in their credit reports. Because at that time, there used to be a local Cincinnati credit bureau that was part of the Pinger system, and they didn't keep track of that. 
So I said, somebody needs to keep track of it. So I started a business called Evict Alert. And the judge helped me get in with the clerk of courts. And we went down and we would record the records of all the people who got evicted and put them in the Apple II computer, which I upgraded to have a common hard drive and a network with three Apple II computers. Other landlords started wanting to buy the information from me and new business was formed. Problem is, how does this get back to diet? Well, when you start doing a new company, you're really busy because I still had to scale company. Now I got the apartments I'm buying and renting. And now I started a Vict Alert. So at that time, we were eating breakfast out, lunch out, and for dinner, we would eat out or we would bring it home. And the one thing we did bring home three or four times a week back then that we really liked was peel and eat shrimp from Long John Silver's. You could buy a bucket. I think there were 21 or 40 in a bucket of basically one and a half inch long peel and eat shrimp. They were deveined and they were already boiled and it wasn't bad food, but there wasn't any home cooking. And when you're starting new businesses, you just eat whenever you can eat, whatever you want to eat. And this new business involved a lot of brain work and sit work and not a lot of brawn. So here was a start of where probably I started gaining more weight than from 1977, because we're in 1981. So I guess the bottom line is, this is before there was such a thing as work-life balance. It was all work, 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 work. Eat when you can, play, play, play. And I guess that's that's where it starts. I guess the, the moral to the story is pay attention to yourself when you're younger or order and make eating healthy a priority. But what is eating healthy? Well, in the next episode, I'm going to tell you that in 1985, I had no clue. Thanks for watching. That's all, folks.